Deuteronomy chapter 19, Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. When the Lord your God has cut off the nations whose land the Lord your God gives you, and you succeed them and dwell in their cities and in their houses, it's not a question of if, only a question of when, God has given them that land as he promised. And when it happens, verse 2, you shall separate three cities for you in the midst of your land, which the Lord your God gives you to possess it. And these cities, as we will see, are the cities of refuge, spoken of in Numbers chapter 35. Three, you shall prepare you a way and divide the coast of your land, which the Lord your God gives you to inherit, into three parts, that every slayer may flee there. So if somebody inadvertently killed someone, uh, they were not to be tried, and, and uh, of, you know, I should say they, they, they were not to be uh, accused of murder, and tried and executed if it was an accident. They were to have a place that they could flee to for refuge, and that's what these cities were about. Four, and this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee there, that he may live. Whoso kills his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in the times past. And so the cities of refuge were for people who killed someone accidentally. And they could flee to one of these cities and the relatives of the victims couldn't get them back, could not avenge the death of their friend or their loved one. Five, as when a man goes into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetched a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slips from the helve and lights upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of the cities and live. So again, it's talking about accidental death. This is just, you know, one example of of what might happen. Verse six, lest the avenger of the blood, and it would probably be a relative or a friend of the victim, pursue the slayer while his heart is hot. He just fired up and all emotional and overtake him because the way is long and kill him. Whereas he was not worthy of death, and so inasmuch as he hated him not in time past, and so, as I said, uh, it was an uh, it was an accident, and, and so the guy could not be put to death for, death for murder, and that would be wrong in the eyes of God, if something like that would take place. Seven. Wherefore I command you, saying, you shall separate three cities for you, and, and that's for that purpose, cities of refuge. 8. And if the Lord your God enlarge your coast, as he has sworn unto your fathers, and give you all the land which he promised to give unto your fathers, if you shall keep all these commandments to do them, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shall you add three cities more for you besides these three. So, later on... Um, there would be on the east side of the Jordan three more, and and these things would have to accumulate according to how large the territory of Israel became. Ten, that innocent blood be not shed in your land, which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance, and so blood be upon you. So you don't want to execute somebody who who is innocent because that would be murder. And... Uh, that's that's as wrong as any premeditated, cold-blooded murder could be. 11. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him and rise up against him and smite him mortally that he die and flees into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood that he may die. So a murderer has to pay for their sins. He could not claim that it was an accident if it was not. 
13, your eyes shall not pity him, but you shall put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel that it may go well with you. Don't pity first degree murderers. Don't pity criminals. Make sure the, the punishment fits the crime, whatever it might be. 14. You shall not remove your neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in your inheritance, which you shall inherit in the land that the Lord your God gives you to possess it. Well, that, that's just talking about how every, um, every tribe had its own inheritance, and every family within the tribe had their own inheritance, and and the Israelites were not to move those landmarks and, and steal somebody else's land. This was to remain in the family. 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sins. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. And so in, in the courts of Israel, there had to be two or three eyewitnesses to convict someone of a crime. 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, so if somebody lies under the under oath in a court of law, 17, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, and shall be in those days. I should say which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. I'm going to have to check out the matter carefully because this is a very serious situation. And God wants justice to be uh, meted out. But in order for that to take place, there has to be investigation. There needs to be some work involved. But it's worth it because justice is worth it. It's worth the effort. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and has testified falsely against his brother, if he has lied on the witness stand, 19, then shall you do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shall you put the evil away from among you. So <clears throat> if, if somebody decided that they were going to give false testimony against someone that they knew were innocent and say the charge was murder, well, if that false witness was discovered, then he would be put to death as if he was a murderer. And uh, if he was a thief, he would have to pay restitution, um, and then some. So this is very simple, isn't it? Very simple, very logical, very straightforward, nothing complicated, very common sense. We have a common sense God. 21, and your eye shall not pity, but life shall be f go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Make the punishment fit the crime, in other words. And don't pity the criminal. Don't let him get off the hook. Just punishment deters crime. That's what God says in his word. So make sure that the criminals are punished because you'll have less crime if that's the case. 